Bada bang bang. And we are joined by the BCU men's football team. Hello, hello, hello. Right, we've got Callum Hodge, and we've got Jamie Mastrick. Right. Tell us what years you're in and what you're studying quickly. Uh, so I'm in final year and I study business. I'm in my last year as well, studying sports science. Oh, I don't know, college. Gave up on it very quickly. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I've still had some time in the last year. I don't know how. But you boys have uh, been to my end today, been to Norwich. Of course. Yeah, lovely little trip. Do you, you like the city? Didn't see much of it to be honest. Just saw, uh, yeah, saw, we saw a yeah, Broadway yeah, Hotel, that's about it. A yeah, couple of bowling alleys, yeah, that was it. It's not, bad, it's not bad, is it? No. Was it, right? was it, it. Good, rich in good, good condition? Mm, a bit wobbly. I've got to say, it's been absolutely better for a cup final. <laughs> Honestly, man. Like, as you were saying, you had yeah, the cup final today. So who are you up against? Uh, Bishop Grosses University from Lincoln. And how did it go? Touchy um, subject. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit of a, a, bit of a touchy one. Um, no, we lost 2-1. Um, we've played sort of five games to get her in the first place, which is, which is fab. Um, but... Today, I think they had two shots, two goals. We didn't take our chance. So the and they beat us. Score. Yeah, literally. Yeah. It was it's frustrating as hell, but what can you do at the end of the day? You know, we've, we've beaten some good teams. but, but like, So we've got uni football sort of thing. With this sort of game coming in, do you have expectations? Like, Do you, do you know how they've done? And like, yeah. Do you have, do you, are you like, you're seeing, like, oh, they lost the title last two games. Of course. Like, like, we're not like, silly. I mean, formal. particularly, I have a job of sort of researching them and seeing how they've gone and stuff. And... They'd beaten teams who were not bad, so we obviously had the, the expectation to go into it and be, it'd be a difficult game. But I think, if I'm being honest with my squad of 16 players, I, I would have fancied this. Again, I know it's difficult to say because we lost, mm. but I'd fancy it against anybody. Um, and like I said, I mean, like, we probably had 80% possession, possession of the ball, but they took their chances. That's why they beat us. It's, it's as simple as that. Was it a good outing though? Was, like, would you, you wouldn't be disappointed with the performance, like, it was managed to oh, that was a great performance, we <laughs> just didn't get a result, was no, it? No, awesome. the, um, the performance was, was good, I think, to a man it was, it was very good. First half wise, I mean they were 2-0 up, they probably had two shots, we'd had, you know, X amount, a lot more and stuff, and, and battered them, and to, and to be honest, I'm a fair person, like, they, if they had absolutely battered us, I would have been like, right, well, they outplayed us, and, and that's it, but, no, we um, played very well, they were 2-0 up there, and we thought, okay, right, let's get into half time, and go from there. We're usually a team that's, within the cup this year, we've bounced back a few times from 1-0 down and gone on and won, but today it just, it just, uh, it wasn't happening. We've got up front, like, particularly the uh, the attacking players. I think between them, um, support from the midfield, it wasn't good enough. And as a result, we didn't create enough chances. We weren't good enough. We weren't clinical enough. And that's why we lost. But do you know what? I think getting to a final, I've been told, no one's ever done that before. Right. So to get there was fab, and obviously experience of staying over and stuff. Yeah, of course you feel like a uh, you feel like a professional footballer at the end of the day. Even in a uh, an Norwich budget. Yeah, yeah, of course, budget. of course, of course you do. But we uh, nah, we um, yeah, still broke our funds. <laughs> honestly, we've got no money now. <laughs> but no, we uh, we just we weren't good enough today in terms of taking our chance, and that's why we lost. Do you reckon a uh, night out rodeo would, um, would uh, if you hadn't done that, would you have won the game? A night out? Oh, yeah. I don't know. Do you know yeah. what? There's been a what? couple of occasions this year where win. So our quarter final, we uh, we played Warwick, and there was about there was a good what, four or five of us that had gone out, and uh, we we come back <laughs> the day after, including me, the captain, to lead by example, <laughs> and uh, we'd come back, and uh, we played very very well. One, we were tuning up. Okay, they got a soft penalty, two one, and we won two one in the end. We but, battered them. But maybe that is the way you lead by example, because you've gone and done that, and you've gone yeah, and won the game. Yeah, but if I'd have done that last <laughs> night, people looking at me going, right, that's our captain. What is he doing there? Do you know what I mean? I can't be doing that. You know, like I've got an element of professionalism to myself as well. And and to be honest, like I sound daft, but going away to a place like Norwich, it's three or four hours away. I've still got a sense of yeah. responsibility to look after everybody. You know, I, I'm a third year, it's, it's my job to make sure that, to a degree, everybody's okay. Like, I'm not a school teacher. I'm going to be like, right, you do this, you're in bed by this, etc. Et but to a degree, in terms of like making sure the kit's sorted, the footballs are sorted, people are in bed, etc. Getting up, certainly this morning, which is fine. Um, I've got a certain responsibility to make sure that that happens. And it did, which was which was great. It's just the result kind of dampened the mood a little bit. We did, just, oh, sorry, we did try, well... 
obviously the ones who weren't playing, we did go out and we tried our best <laughs> to get some people to come out, which we probably shouldn't have done, but so I fair play to the squad, everyone who was playing stayed in, and we just went out. To be fair, what do you expect? Uh, got a cup final, I mean, Yeah, got, I, think, yeah. I mean, wasn't, wasn't expecting everyone to jump on it, but... <laughs> Um, He's not trying to convince us. Yeah, there's, 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 a, great. there's a no couple chance. people I had in mind who I thought, yeah, we'll definitely. My squad, this, my squad is disciplined. Yeah. We yeah. still, <laughs> we still, <laughs> still to a degree. Team. Come on. But, <laughs> so as has, as the season as a whole, how has that been for you guys this year? Fairly good. So from a first team perspective, because I've been Kellen here, he plays he plays second team. They've done very well as well. As a whole of football at uh, BCU, sorry, um, quite good first team from my perspective. We've played 12 games, we've won, we've won nine and lost three. Two of them being against the team that are going to win our league, which is disappointing because we, we beat them 8-0 in the cup, the exact same team. But that's what we're we just I'll be honest, we didn't turn up. And obviously today we've lost as well, which is you know, it's a bit of a dampen, but that's football for you. And I know for a fact that, and you can correct me on this, the second mm -hmm. team were maybe a win away from winning the, the, the league. Yeah, so... Um... Obviously, speaking to the coaches and just everyone in and around the football society, um, they've all said like this year we've had the strongest first team, strongest second year, second team. Sorry, we've had at the uni since the longest coaches we've had about six years. We've been here, so I mean, it shows that obviously we're progressing mm. as a society. But obviously, we've just sort of fell short. Both our teams probably hit seconds in our leagues this year, where at the start of the seasons we were. Because we thought, you know what, bang on, we're getting first. But no, nah, just did just a, a couple of things just didn't fall that way, and the sort of like seconds we needed to win our last game, and we had to rely on uh, another uni to lose their game. They lost their game, but we uh, managed to draw. Um, so now the best we can do is finish second, which yeah we will. But as you said, like you said there before. The expectations weren't there, say, a couple of years back, maybe when mm. you first joined uni. Yeah, 100%. What have you guys done personally? Have you done anything personally that's different to try and ensure like a, 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 an improvement in terms of results? Or is it, just, is it just luck of people who join the uni? It's a bit of both. Yeah, both definitely. yeah definitely. Like, I'm not going to sit here and say, yeah, I've been, I've been grand. Therefore, that's the reason it's changed. Mm. Like, I think last year we had a very good squad as a first team. And when it came to our varsity, we played, obviously, Aston first as our first, who were sort of two or three leagues above. Gave them a good competition, they won 1 0 and arguably shouldn't have done. Um, whereas this year, we've been quite lucky in the sense that our, our freshers that have come in um, football wise have been very good. I've, I've brought in four or five very, very good players that will start every week for me, uh, which is very lucky at the end of the day. I mean, like my, my first year going into my second year, there were not many good players that you think, right you're going to step into our team and go bang, we're going to kill the league this year. And we came second last year as well as the first team. Uh, whereas this year, I've had a couple of very good centre-halves and a couple of very good midfielders join us, which have, they've been, uh, well, they almost expel, excel, sorry, um, in expectations. Um, I'll be honest, I started the season, I thought, okay, we're going to struggle here in the sense that, because we had very good players last year who needed replacing. I thought, hmm, it's going, to be, it's going to be quite difficult to do that, but there's, like I said, there's been a good four or five players that have joined who have set up a new system in the way we play and stuff, and they fit in very nicely. Uh, but if, if you didn't ask me last year, right, do you think there'll be enough good players to join this year? Obviously last year, um, that will make up how you've been this year. I would have said no to you, because the players we had last year were very, very good. But again, we, we were both at the trials, myself and, and Callum, and... The players that were there, I think it was quite easy to notice, okay, you're good enough, mm. you're not, you might be second team quality, third team quality, etc, etc. But the lads who've stepped up to my squad, my first team squad, have been excellent all year. I mean, there's a reason that we've, we've won nine and lost three. Um, and like I said to you, the games that we've lost, in all fairness, have been very much, I've had on the day, because obviously people have got uni, people have got stuff going on, I've had very depleted squads. Apart from today, where we've lost, which is of course disappointing, I've had very depleted squads, and I'm not going to blame it on that solely because you can't do that as a as a captain, as a manager. But if I'd had full strength squads, I think we'd have had far more of a chance of winning the games. Mm. Uh, when it comes to, like I said, varsity this year, I think 
we've got a very, very good chance of winning. And you can hold me to that. Because when it comes to it, I think that the players I've got, including myself, a lot of them play sort of semi-professional football, good level, they know what the game's about, they're not going to cry if they get left out, etc, etc. Whereas last year, it was very much, you've had maybe one or two players that play at a good level, and if they get left out, they don't understand that, and they don't understand, right, why I'm on the bench, why am I getting brought on, etc, etc. Whereas for the occasion, like I said myself, because I pick the teams, particularly this year, I will pick the team that I feel is best going to win us the game. I'm, I'm not somebody who... I've got friends with me who play my team, who I live with, for example. I don't pick them because I'm friends with them. I pick them because I think, right, you're going to do a good job for us today, and you're the best candidate to win us the football match. For me, it's it's not about having, like, particularly having played at sort of semi-professional level, I've been left out a lot of times, and managers saying to me, you're not quite there, you're not quite ready, etc., etc. I have to just be like, okay, that's fine. Okay. And people at uni, I think, because of the way I am and the way I like explain things, I get a lot of respect for that. And when it comes to varsity in particular, I mean, we've got two more league games, fine, but they're almost n non-existent to a degree because I don't mean anything. No. Whereas when it comes to varsity, when you've got 200, 300, 400 fans watching you, I will pick the team that day dependent on who I think will go out there and do a job and win a football match. I've got nothing to do with oh, you're my friend, or you've done this, etc, etc. For example, today, a cup final, I let the lad who booked us the entirety of the hotels, even breakfast in the morning, as an I didn't play him. And I'm quite good friends with him. He's the, he's the treasurer of our football, um, etc. But I haven't played him because I don't feel he's quite there in terms of he's going to be there to win us the game. He's a very good substitute, which he came on as, but I'm not somebody who is, okay, you're my mate, you've done this for me, you've done that for me, I'm going to play you, sort of thing. I'm very much, today, I'm going to play a team who I think is going to win us at the cup. Okay, we didn't, but I played our strongest squad, who I feel, on the day, knowing how they play as well, um, are going to win us at the cup. And if people have something to say about, about it, obviously, then I expect them to. But I think, as, even as a captain, this year round, um, I expected people to be a lot more critical of myself in the sense that, oh, you leave me out, why are you not playing me, etc. But people have been very much like, okay, if if Jamie's not playing me, Jamie's not playing me for a reason. Mm. If I'm on the bench, Jamie's left me on the bench for a reason. I haven't had many people come to me and go, oh, why am I this? Why am I that? And I think it shows a good, it's it's a good it's good discipline showing me in my squad this year, and that's why we've done so well. I think even last year, I mean, I don't know if you met Ryan Manning, he was the captain last year. He was very similar to me in the sense that what he would do and what he would say would be very similar. He would pick a team based on what he thought um, would win the game. The difference being, though, is that last year we had uh, a consolidated coach who hmm. would continuously take our training sessions, take our game fixtures, etc. This year, it's very much like... I have to pick the squad and then whatever coach decides to turn up on the day because first team of priority, and I use asterisks for that because we're not, no one's priority, um, decides with me at the end of the day. And I would rather it very much be, okay, we've got a coach to consolidate for the rest of the year who goes, right, he's been good, he's been not, Jamie, pick him, don't pick him, which is a lot more easier than someone coming in who doesn't take our training sessions going, right, I agree with you, I disagree with you. It makes your life a lot more complicated. I was going to say, how, so how does it work? Because we had a very small glimpse of the women's football mm. uh, the other week. Uh, the it's different. Left for it. So how does it work with like, terms of the coach and how it integrates with the yeah. team? Because so, like, especially there's, there's different levels with you guys. There's, there's of course. Seconds, and thirds. And the thirds. And, and for yeah. that, whereas the girls, it's, it's the first team, that's it. And then there's mm. the, the integration squad. Sort yeah, of yeah, yeah. They play They've got a development squad. Mm. Right? Yeah. We don't. But. So when you go to the first, second, and thirds, how does that work in terms of coaching? Like running? Team coaching and then the team selection process. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and so, training um, sessions, that sort of stuff as well. Yeah, with um, so with the training sessions, we train every Monday. Um, and then we have a coach for each um, team um, who, who takes our session. But then on match days, only one coach usually is normally available, and he's the one who trains the third team. Um, so when he's available, obviously, like Jan was saying, um, first team normally get um, priority over the, the coaches. Um, <laughs> um, but 
it's not always, I, I don't know, I think some people have mentioned that it's not always the brightest idea because obviously if he's training with the third team in training yeah, then he doesn't know as much about exactly. it. It makes it difficult. Play and stuff like that. So just a um, bit of, a couple of issues have been raised which obviously probably will be or Continue need to be addressed on, yeah. with within the next year um, yeah. coming in. Obviously it's a bit late in the season now mm -hmm. to get it right away but um, yeah that, that's a general selection process and same with like the trial process they're there on hand to um, like, pick out players mm -hmm. who they think are going to fit in well in, in the teams that we've got. But is it, so the way you would prefer it is if, say, you had one coach assigned to the team. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's, like, it's, um, it's not that. It's just like it's the yeah one coach assigned to the team, and we get that at, that's at, at, um, okay, sure. at training. But we like if the coaches are going to go, be the coaches that are training you on Mondays. As like, there's what's the point having a coach who trains the third team on? Mondays mm. go into the first team game and so like obviously managing their team if he doesn't train them and no. hasn't seen them how how they how they've been performing yeah. in training um, I think that's 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 been the main issue. So is is there a coach per team? Yeah, yeah. At exactly. training, but exactly. not on game day. Game day is totally different. There's only one coach who's usually available because they the other two coaches okay. usually have like a part time job yeah. or oh, okay. full time job. They're still working thing, which is it's irritating because at the end of the day, like I say, is that last year we had. Um, we consolidated the coach quite early, sort of like maybe our first couple of games we were sort of playing off whatever the captain said. Whereas this, sorry, for the rest of last year, it was very much okay, I'm the gaffer, I'm going to pick the team, yeah. we're going to train together, whatever I tell you to do, you do, which is fine, I totally yeah. get it, it's not arrogance or anything, it's a case of then he can, he was name was Jimmy, and uh, he could then witness everything and go, right. You're not playing because of this reason, mm -hmm. blah 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 blah. Whereas this year it's a case of I have because I have to pick the team. I have a case of myself witnessing how players train or don't train for that matter, which is a big impact. And then I have two coaches, one of which Josh, who is with us, telling me, okay, maybe you should consider this, which of course I take into account. And then I have another coach who doesn't train us mm -hmm. turning up on a match day, going. When I tell him my squad and my start limit, they'll go, mm, I don't know if you should do that. Whereas next year, because obviously we're both leaving this year, is anything I could say for next year is get yourself a coach who you will have for the consistency of the year, who can then tell you what to do, mm -hmm. not what to do, what's right, what's not, who he's picking, who he's not, because it makes life so much easier. Because to be honest, and I'm very surprised by this, I'll, I'll admit this on live there, is that Whenever I've not picked players, either to start or be in a squad, I've never had any aggravation from mm. it. Which, it might be a respect thing, it might be a general, okay, this is how football works sort of thing. But last year, when we've had a coach, I've had so many people say to me, right, or the captain last year, particularly when I heard, why am I not in the squad? Why am I not this? Why am I not that? And I know players leave and players fluctuate between, of course, different universities, they go one way, go the other, or whatever. Whereas this year, it's been quite consistent in the sense that, okay, I'm part of this squad. If Jamie wants to include me, if the coaches want to include me, that's fine. But I've had nobody moan to me, which has been great. I think, I think that's part of a reason as to why we've done so well this year. Because our team sort of unity has been fantastic. In a sense that we're a very united sort of squad. And it's been a case of, right, if you're in a squad, and I've said this every game, you're in a squad for a reason. It's not a case of... Mm, okay, I've picked you a random out of a hat sort of thing. I've picked you because I feel that on the day, regardless if you're playing, if you're on the bench, blah, 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 you can do a job for us. And I think even next year when I'm not here, that's how it needs to be because it means a lot more of a unity opposed to just a coach going, right, you're here, you're here, you're here. And players being like, okay, well, why? And question his decision. Whereas I've had nobody question my decision this year. Uh, I'm doing this bit in post, but now we're going to discuss with the men's football team, uh, Varsity, all things Varsity, get their score predictions for how they feel their team's going to do, and just Varsity in general, how they feel BCU are going to do regarding the Aston fixtures. We're going to be at most events that we possibly can be. Obviously, there's only three of us at work here. Well, work, quotation. Um, <laughs> the throws on the sports team. Yeah. Um, so hopefully people are going to help us out. But we're going to look to do some interviews and content at all the sporting events uh, but obviously we could do the main live stream event at the football which these lads will be playing or participating at we can also I will propose to you right now Hodge mm -hmm. 
So the idea I had, I posed in the meeting today, oh, yeah. is that we would have a male on for the women's live stream to commentate as a sub commentator. Which would you like? Would you be interested in? So what we might do is we do one half, one person, second half. So Jim, you could do it as well. I mean, I'm I'm up for it. So you could do yeah, second yeah, half, yeah, half the first half. Yeah. I'll do it. Thing is, because yeah. there's obviously varsity we're probably good involved well, me personally I'm not paying on that day so I'm probably going to be quite heavily intoxicated that's fine all the way I, I am Jam, playing so I'll be sober Jam's so bit of commentary I'll, 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 I'll come to sit we'll I'll definitely wait. get you first half then so you might be less <laughs> <laughs> then we'll get you second half <laughs> so we'll be yeah, alright we'll bring a few chants mate yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll, right. you, we'll definitely hear you in the background it'll be fine so that's what, there we go. That's confirmed on there. It is on camera and it's all confirmed. You just that, that that is you. <laughs> You're in trouble, mate, because I'm playing, so I ain't gonna be drinking nothing. Oh, so that's basically a signature on air. It's all reversal for us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 right. And then when, <laughs> you, <laughs> and then when you guys are playing, we're gonna get one of the girls to come on and commentate. Oh, so so I can't commentate that. We're gonna put a mic on you half through the game so you can commentate. They don't have a They don't have we were talking just before the song. MLS is great, so they do the interviews half through the game, it's great. Yeah, they MLS is like, strange. What, each player has a, has a mic? No, they? so they were like the all-star games and they play like Juventus or something like that. Yeah, they, they put the goalkeeper with the mic the on. Yeah. Really? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That'd be, yeah, it's that'd interesting. Be interesting. That's it on YouTube. Uh, I'm YouTube. Oh, we've got Brad Guzan getting his thoughts of the game. <laughs> <laughs> right. They do, they do that in the cricket sometimes, they've got Freddie Flint off and he starts singing and it's an Elvis Presley song halfway through his bowling. He's like running up to the sweet... Why is that Elvis Presley song and start singing Neil Diamond? Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, sorry. Um, but yeah, again, varsity. So expectations going into it, obviously with the the three teams, the boys and obviously the girls. But expectation for your teams personally that you're going to be involved with. We'll go with Hodge first. Yeah. So um, being on the second team, um, so we'll be playing the seconds, obviously. Um, they so have been, in, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They've been in the same league um, as our first this year. Um, so we're going in quite open-minded, considering the results that they've had, because they've played um, twice in the league, unfortunately been turned over twice 3-1 on both occasions. Can I just say though, I had two depleted squads that game. Yeah, well, it wasn't a case of, right, I've got my first team. Particularly the first game, honestly, I had an absolute, I think I had a bare 12 players. So I had one sub, and the players that I had on the pitch, with some of them just wouldn't get near my starting eleven usually. Oh, but anyway, you know it's not like you start you know, you know you that would be a shot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, and then the third time they played them, I think it was in between those two fixtures, they played them in the cup and they just slapped, slapped the main nil. So we're going in quite open minded. Slapped the, is a uh, very yeah, terminal word <laughs> to use. It, it wasn't battery, no. I didn't like getting slapped. <laughs> That's, that's what so, I'm to say. So that's the, that's, that's uh, the expert view you've got that uh, getting slapped by you. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now we're going in quite open minded, but obviously, if people ask, we say Aston are getting slapped. Can you give me a score prediction? I reckon Ooh. it'll be close because the varsity, For your everyone games. wants it in. I'm going to say. I think you'll win. I right, you could be. could go to Pens, but I'm going. We're, we're going to edge it 2 1. Are you going to score personally? Yeah. No one does. This no, is I'll, I'll, I'll see, see what I can do. I'll see what I can do. We'll see. Oh, we'll get a few penalties. Have you played five times? You better score. I um, yeah, we'll get a few. Get a penalty. I'm taking it. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and for the first, um, what is, in terms of a score prediction? Well, just oh, expectations. Just generally, um, so we, last year we, we had. Jam's going to get a yellow card. I'm not going to get a card. I don't get it. So, a quick question before that as well. Is it the same rules in terms of if you get a yellow card, you've got to pay the certain fine? Yeah, of course it is. It's actually. Yeah, you can look, despite wow. passing, it's only friendly. But, look, but even yeah, though like, the, uni, the uni leagues and that sort of stuff, you oh, can cover. Yeah, yeah, that's it. You think it would Because the, the referee on the day is a. Um, is it FA official? Yeah. Ah. So I'm going to hope. And I get an email the next day, right, Jane, you're 10 quid. Cool. Jam just loves, loves giving his money away. No so way. He, um, I, it, it, to be fair to me, right, I'm quite a no nonsense sort of player, whereas last year I. I must have clocked up about a good four or five bookings this year. I've only done the one, and that's me as a captain. Really? So I think the fact that that arm man's on my, my left arm is, has helped massively. Whereas if it, if it hadn't let him, then yeah, I'd be in trouble a few times. Um, and, and it counts as well? Yeah, yeah, of course it does. I can't believe it. Because if their officials take it, then they obviously want to take it. I still think like, sort of you'd, just like, you'd be like, oh yeah, it's technically a sort of a friendly sort of thing, isn't it? But I'd love to argue that to the heavens, <laughs> but they take no for an answer, so it's, I can't say anything. But um, in terms of prediction, um, I think last year, so we lost, we lost one 0 I had 
I wasn't the, obviously I wasn't the captain at the time, but we had a very good team last year, and Aston first team played sort of two or three leagues above us. So we thought, okay, going into it, there's not really much pressure on us to turn them over because they're expected to win. Fine, put a very good account in of ourselves. Um, you know, I mean, their goal was scrappy as hell as well. It wasn't the case of like, okay, do you know what? Let me just clap that. It's a very good, mm. very good sort of goal. It was, it was scrappy as anything sort of thing. And we had good players leave last year, but I feel honestly, I think that the players this year that have come in and filled those positions have done a very, very good job. Um, in terms of my, my left back, my right back, I've got a new centre half this year. I have a very good centre attacking midfielder. They've come in and almost filled the positions of lads that were here last year. Which, in all honesty, when watching the, the sort of trials, I thought, okay, there might be one, maybe two sort of good players. I've had a good five or six players come into my squad this year. I've gone, yeah, do you know what? You can really make a difference. And they've started most games, those sort of lads, their first years. So, in terms of varsity wise, I think. <clears throat> I couldn't give you a prediction. I think it'd be difficult. You've got, You've got it. Yeah, that's kind of how well, it I'm not going to say. I'm not going to say, gonna say we're not going to win. So I, I say one to us against oh, yeah. this year. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no chance. I mean, you're playing in front of a big crowd. Do, we won't get slapped. But the way we're like sort of the sort of tears at tear leagues. I mean, that's all we're going to get slapped. Yeah, yeah, of course they are. <laughs> You've got to say it. I'm just. <laughs> if you say well, it enough times, it comes true. They're just getting palmed. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, but the way it works, because like, again, like, it depends on what for, sort of freshers or even like transfers to you and that sort of stuff. Like your, mm. your team completely change from being you know, exactly. pretty, yeah, uh, pretty poor to pretty awesome. Yeah. Mm. Does that what you guys achieve this year? Does that, does that then affect the team next year, regardless? I think the sort of like, way it works. In terms of, I think it, it does in the sense that I mean, I made a very good point of saying today, hearing. The opposing team celebrate in a final after a win. It's kind of like, okay, do not let this happen next year. I literally said to my, my lads, okay, you have a listen to that. Listen to how that feels. You're sat on the opposing side of that, listening to them celebrate. Do not be that team next year that sits there again. Be the team that celebrated with the champagne bottles and stuff. Because I'm not going to lie to you. I mean, I, before today, I had never lost a cup final. And even as a captain, being in third year at university, 21 years old, it's, it's hard to sit there and take it if mm. you like it's, it's very it's frustrating because look i'm not going to blame anybody we didn't win because of how we play we didn't take our chances etc etc but i think if we'd have played the way we usually play more so to a degree i think we'd have been fine but today we just we went we <laughs> we considered two goals very quickly first sort of 20 minutes and from there on it was like they sat back very deeply we got a goal back second half quite early, dominated, and just couldn't put the ball in there. But I think when it comes to varsity, you go in with, with a slightly different mindset. I haven't played it for two years. I've won it one year, and I've lost it one year. And I will say to my lads, in a sense, that when it comes to the winning side, it's the best feeling in the world. You don't beat it. You seriously don't beat it. When you lose, however, despite my, like our fans who were there last year, our players who were there, Etc. Etc. It was fantastic. We still lost. Whereas if we'd have won, the story would have been completely different. And I said to my lads this year, you will want to have a winning feeling because it is the best feeling on the planet. So you're saying one 0 Yeah, I'm gonna go one 0 Yeah, I'm. Are you gonna score the goal? No, of course <laughs> I'm a holding midfielder. That's not my job. I just said that. Last no, a no, no, long range bolt. I scored one this year, first game of the season. <laughs> Never again. That's me done for the season. Could happen last Go on. No, no chance. I'll have faith if it comes out, then, <laughs> of course, but no chance. But in, in basically overall, the Aston against Slap. Overall, Aston against Slap. Final one. You like to think so. Yeah, I, I believe that our first, seconds, and thirds could all do a job on them this year. That's right. That's it. Do you reckon. I don't know how involved you are with the other sports committees and that sort of stuff. Do you reckon yeah, yeah, we're going to actually win Varsity this year? It's because we just obviously we're saying about slapping Aston and this, that, and the other. <laughs> obviously, there's, there's an element of um, obviously just wanting to believe that. But at the same time, yeah, realistically, like say, yeah, realistically um, I think all games are going to be quite even in terms of football. But Unless we sabotage sports, them somehow. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Let's do it. Bring, let's if you've got it. any ideas, let us know. Yeah, so, yeah. Please <laughs> do. Uh, if you've got any ideas, how to sabotage Aston, um, sabotage Let us know on our Twitter and Instagram. Uh, at Scratch Radio Sports yeah. and at Scratch underscore Sport on Twitter. 
But before we go on to your personal teams, which are Birmingham and Chelsea, we're going to have a little interval. Uh, just a quick interval here to remind you to subscribe to the channel, like the video if you're enjoying it, and just tune in on Wednesday between 7 and 9, or Saturday between 9 in the morning and 1. Get your morning started with a lovely bit of sport. Now, let's get back to the video to find how the BCU men's football team feel about the teams they support. And obviously the massive rise of Jude Bellingham, who is, he I does play, look, I've, I've, watched, against I've watched, you played against him. Give us, give us an insight of what it's like playing against them though, Ah, he's quite good. It's quite, it's quite, <laughs> it's quite, it's quite simply like, unreal, mate. so when I was at Walsall, <laughs> quite good, yeah. unreal, blue unreal. Fan, unreal. No, he is, like, I can't disagree with that. I mean, I, I played like a decent level and he played a few years up when I played against him. He, he played centre midfield. I was a right back at the time for Walsall and he, he honestly, like, I could, honestly, I could sit there and almost enjoy watching him mm. do his thing. And not quickly after he joined the 21s at Birmingham, I thought, okay, this kid's going to go far. There's not many lads I've played against that I've gone, yeah, you'll make it. But he he was special. Was he just running you off the park then? Because obviously you're saying. I played right back at the time. Oh, you're right back at the time, yeah. If I played midfield, I'd be just going to say. I'd have had no chance. <laughs> but but what, 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 is his, what is his position now then? Because as a blue, so you yeah. can see him most often. Because I've, I've seen him a couple of games, he plays sort of left wing, yeah, so attacking mid, sort of, he has that transitional pit like. Thing, um, that position. So, is he a winger? Is he attacking? Is he a box to box? Naturally, I think he's a cent he's like a centre mid. But then, obviously, like you said, he's been playing out on the wing mm. quite a lot. Um, but to be honest, when he's on the pitch, he just seems to be everywhere. Like he's sixteen years old, but he's almost running the show. Oh, he's six. Yeah, it's crazy. It's obviously, joking, he's I mean, running he the show. Puberty yet, and he's yeah, yeah, starting yeah. Birmingham's probably arguably their best player this year. It's it's mental, and obviously he's been in talks with Dortmund, and obviously he's seen at the United training ground. Which I think that's basically confirms where he's going to be moving this summer, isn't it? Yeah. Do you think Sarpi is a bit of an as well? Yeah. Like, at such a young age, do you think the because we said before that the, the right thing for him would probably be to be come back on loan for another year? Because again, he's yeah. Only, again, he will be 17 by the time he probably moves. Yeah, which exactly. is so young. It's like even though, even Sancho was 18, 19 when he moved to Dortmund, and he's only become this mega talent when he's sort of grown to sort of. It's like, like the same same thing I say with Alexander Arnold and Rashford. When you get into your body, like your man's body at 20, 21, mm -hmm. then you become these world beaters. Yeah. Is it worth him spending a year two, like getting maybe like, even a two year line of Birmingham sort of thing, and then when he's 19, he gets to that Man United squad and does what he's doing at Birmingham for Man United. Yeah, I'd I'd say definitely. A two-year loan would be an ideal period for him to come back to Birmingham, not just as a Blues fan, but for his personal development. Because you see it quite often mm -hmm. that the youngsters go to these big teams, but then they're just sat in the reserves or um, was that under twenty ones yeah. or whatever. But they don't really progress, or they just get put out on loan because at that they've got the caliber of players coming in. It's hard for a sixteen-year-old to compete with the likes of was it a good goal? Is it then Al Marshall? Marshall? Oh, there's less strikers actually, but I don't well, actually. Well, there's well, well, not even good at the moment. Well, it's supposed to be what we got. Fernandez is having. Oh, yeah, Fernandez actually, yeah. Pogba's supposed yeah. to be looking at signing Scott a new McTominay. contract. Scott McTominay. Jackie will. Talks apparently that Pogba is going to be looking to sign a new contract at Man United and stay a bit longer because basically Fernandez has been like, yeah, I'm really good at football, stay. And he's like, <laughs> yeah, why not? It'd be a fun one. Yeah. I think the two of them together would be That'd absolutely be. lethal. I mean, when Pogba's fully fit, you can see what he can do, but. Fernandez, like you said, has almost lit up the Premier League May United's way to a degree. I, with what he's doing. I'm a bit sceptical still, because haven't all of his goals been penalties? Not all. All but no. one? All but yeah, one. Yeah, all but one, I think. So I'm a bit like, yeah. Like, you can't just say clearly, clearly they've gone, they clearly they've gone. Have a penalty so he looked good in front of the fans. Yeah. And like, but he has been playing well, obviously. Like, yeah, I've got a Yeah, well, they've all got weird lines. Have you seen... Emless touch back again. Have you seen <laughs> Joseph Martinez run up? No. It is the weirdest thing. Why would I have seen it? Who watches MLS? Because everyone does. Um, he literally jumps in front of the ball. That's like Jorginho at Chelsea. Yeah, they do the weird like, like, jump and then stab. Do you know what, though? I will say this, right? As a professional, if you can pull that off, it's very clever. Because you will them. watch when a goalkeeper goes and yeah. you'll put it the other side. It's a guaranteed goal. But you've got to have such ability to do it. I'll just be the Dabba Louise sort of mantra and just, just have a hundred yard one up <laughs> smack it top in. It worked, it worked for us to be in the Champions League final. So. Uh, goalie's got a good little happy. run up for his goal kick, yeah. doesn't he? So your goalkeeper's got a run up? Yeah, he's got a good little, he does a little stutter, doesn't he, as he runs up to take his goal kicks. Well, well, Alex, 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 yeah, Alex, Alex, not yeah, Alex, yeah, 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 he does that little... I think a lot of goalkeepers for some reason will yeah, do a little step and then bang. Maybe it right. Their kicks go miles. They don't do like a, they don't do like a Joe Hart in front of the penalty. 
but he starts sticking his tongue out and like, <laughs> throwing some. Oh yeah, he does. He does. Like, I've seen him obviously yeah, he plays for um, seconds quite often as well, and he's yeah, he's been in goal for a penalty. And I think there was two penalties in the one game. First one he saved, and the second one obviously went in. But can't really blame him for that. But yeah, he's, he's been pulling off some weird limb movements, yeah, 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 facial expressions. I can never be a goalkeeper. Like in terms of just generally knowing how to do things, mm-hmm. despite my very small height, mm-hmm. I think exactly. the way goalkeepers are so clever in the way they put players off in terms of either touching the post or touching mm-hmm. the crossbar. Mm-hmm. I think it's very clever. Even like our goalkeeper this year, Alex or Billy King, oh, man, I've got a mixture of the both. They will always scuff the penalty spot. And the amount of penalties I've seen missed this year as a good three or four because of something they've done. And the are a good goalkeeper in the sense that they will just then be able to latch on to, okay, you're going this way, bang, save. Well, but bring to keepers in your team. Mm-hmm. So the man who's basically named after his position, Kepa. Uh-huh. Keeper, basically, like to his pants. I don't like him. He's pants. He is pants, is he? Yes. Would you, are you preferring Willy Caballero, who is old enough to be one of my dad's here? <laughs> That's a very good question. Um, as, a, as a Chelsea fan, okay, I've seen Kepa play for a season, season and a half. The first season he played for us, he was a lot more consistent in terms of the year shot stopping. His percentage to shot to goal ratio was quite good. And he'd be sort of top five, top six. Yeah. Whereas this year, like anybody watching or listening could be like, right, well, he's bottom sort of two, three, if not rock he's a, bottom. He's the second worst in the league. Exactly. He, he's been pants this year, whereas I think Caballero, uh, who is the worst? I, is there anyone worse than him? Don't you dare say no. Tim Crow. I think no, he's no, the no, worst. It's probably the Villa goalie. It's... Probably. <laughs> what, Rayner? Yeah. He's a great goalie. Any, any, Villa, any Villa player is the worst. Yeah. I'll go Did not he, Didn't he do like, some blunder the other day against Leicester? Probably. Like, I didn't realise they played the other night. Did, you did. didn't cover that. Yeah, that was 4-0, yeah, 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 which you'll be happy about. He got slapped. Because, like, <laughs> as all Aston teams all do. All Aston teams. Oh, there seems that. to be a theme. Not, not against Aston, yeah. yeah. But, yeah. but as, as, we, as we're coming to the end of the show and everything like that, give us a realistic uh, expectations for your for the Blues and then you are the Blues as well. For Chelsea. So we'll, okay. we'll go Birmingham first. Yeah, Blues probably finish mid table, lower mid table. I thought you were going to say top. Well, the, the, the <laughs> Scott Hogan's just come in and he's been scoring goals. Like, are you happy games. about that? I'm buzzing. He's been really? scoring, he's been bagging you goals. Even Huh? Even though he's Villa? He doesn't score for Villa, he scores for Blues. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I think, yeah, realistically, if he stays in form, we'll hit high mid-table, if he stops, then... No, I don't think, we won't, we won't touch playoffs, <laughs> but high mid-table. That was a very big pull. So like, we, we, could, we, <laughs> we could hit like ninth, which is high mid-table yeah. in the Championship. Like, so and for Chelsea? Um, hmm. <laughs> I want to say we'll finish top four. Do I think we will? It's a difficult one. I think because I think for some reason, despite all the years I've been going, I think Man United have got such momentum at the minute in terms of their bad, the Gallo, Bruno Fernandes and signings. It's such a positive note that they're striving to... Ex- well, he's done well. I think he's done quite well. I personally, I don't think... He ain't a fab, he's not a fab striker, but he scores goals. And if I had somebody throughout the season at BCU, who was like, you're going to score me goals. Which I've got, he's a good player though, I'll go fab, I'll take the last bite of your hand off for it. Yeah. Um, but I think for some reason, I think they will get a good four bit of form together. I think they will come fourth. I think Chelsea will come fifth. And also because, team, of, maybe. because of Man City's yeah. um, disruption, to we say, I think we'll still qualify. Which I'll take, for right now, my first season, I would have gone right. If we don't win anything, but we qualify for the Champions League, despite him letting, I think he's eight under 21s players make their debuts this They've year. They've all done very well. Who could, could, could all easily exactly. play at the you, Yeah, of course. If you look at sort of Mason Mount, Rhys James, very good candidates to sort of go on and do bigger things at such a young age as well. If you give them time, I think, particularly Rhys James, well, and Mason Mount, to be fair, I think they will come into their own when they're sort of mid-20s. They'll be competing at sort of World Cup, yeah. European Championships, etc. Et and even, even players like He's Scottish, but Billy Gilmore. Yeah, and he's great against Liverpool. Of course, and a lot of players are raving about him, and I think I've seen him. I've watched him play since he was at the academy. I think okay, you will do a lot of a of a good job for Scotland. He will definitely get into their Scotland squad 
I think at this he's, time he's he could back to the under 21s. Yeah, of course he has. Yeah. Steve Clark, I think, is silly. Even at this point in time, to go, okay, I'm not going to consider you. But we'll see what happens. He's a he's a young prospect. We'll see what happens. All right, well, thank you boys for coming in. It's been a great having you guys. Yeah, yeah, we'll we'll try, and, yeah. try and get you boys uh, involved with varsity, of course. Yeah, 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 yeah of course. Yeah, we've got some camera now, so yeah, yeah gonna have to. Hello lovely people, thank you for watching this video on the Scratch Sport YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe, like the video, and share it with all your friends. Subscribe! <laughs> Done.